Thanks, Dad. Right. Cool, thank you. Each time you drop a bruv, it's a range of emotions. Sometimes you're worried about not getting it back. A lot of excitement when you've got them all on board and you get to see all the fishes. These are like a prized Tongan species of fish. There's always surprises. You never know what you're going to get. Holy moly. Where, and what like depth is that? Oh, it's wow. huge. My name's Lizzie Myers. I'm a postdoctoral researcher in coastal biodiversity, but more specifically, I'm a fish ecologist. We're here to characterise the fish biodiversity, how they interact with each other, how they interact with their environment, and really flesh out the species list that we know of Tonga. But we're focusing on the mesophotic depths, which haven't really been looked at. The benefit of the bruvs coming in on leg three is that we can really build on the data that's been captured before us. So we've had the oceanography team coming through to look at the currents, the tides, the internal waves, and the mapping team as well to look at the bathymetry, the topography, as well as fine scale differences in habitat. So we can prioritise where all these teams have been, but also add a little bit on either side as well. All right, we're ready. OK. So these are pretty standardised around the globe. 60 minutes they get left down for. And that gives enough time for the bait plume to spread for what they call a species accumulation curve. So we're seeing the maximum amount of fishes that we can. Recording in three, two, one. They consist of two cameras. Just gonna chop that again. This works to synchronize the two cameras. You can calibrate them so that you're able to measure distances. And by distances, we're interested in fish length. Yep, good. From fish lengths, you're able to get estimates of biomass. Bottoms which is really important when you're trying to link productivity of a system, particularly for fisheries management. Yes, jobfish. They're a key target species for the deep water snapper fishery here in Tonga. We can then link any changes that we're seeing in abundance, fish biomass, even fish behaviour, with the data that's been captured before us. So changes with the oceanography, the benthic habitat, the mapping and the corals and get a complete picture of what's happening in the mesophotic reefs. What depth is this? This is 80 metres. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Through this expedition, through all the bruv drops that we've seen, it's just such a high variety of mesophotic benthic habitats, which leads to all different abundances and, and diversity of fishes as well. The showstopper comes in. Oh, oh, there he is. We've seen a really cool blotched fantail ray. Wow. At least. Like, yeah, that is so that. close. Like I think it was about as big as I am tall, which was really neat. But also, just blown away with the diversity of fish and the numbers. That looks like oh, a lot of volcanic. They're, they're beautiful. Eventually, when all that data's been analysed, we'll be seeing how that fits into the global picture with the Inkfish program. So we've got sites in the Caribbean, we've got a temperate site in New Zealand, and now we've got a Pacific site. So really excited to dig into that a little bit deeper.